Most likely, you've connected a potentiometer to an ADC input before. The potentiometer splits the voltage rail, and then we put the center tap into the ADC. Now, if we read the analog value at some interval, the system can do something with it, such as send the data to a serial monitor. But, what if you want to detect when the knob is changed instead? In this video, I'll show several topologies for smoothing out ADC noise and detecting motion. So let's get going. If the goal is to detect a change in the knob position, we'll have to compare the present ADC value to some saved value. We'll add a memory element to the global space, then compare it to the current value. If they are not the same, we know the knob has moved. But rather than using the crusty old serial monitor, I've written this processing program to draw the graph in real time. Here, the red trace shows the raw ADC value, and the purple trace down below indicates when the two values are not equal. I've also replaced the redboard with a development tool that I've built, but the concepts are the same. No matter where I position the knob, the system is constantly detecting the change. It's a bit better than no movement detection, though, as repeated input values are ignored. A super easy thing we can try is to just chop off those pesky, least significant bits where all the noise is. We see a few counts of noise, so let's kill the lowest four bits, or a range of 16. We'll do this by logically anding a binary mask. I'm now displaying the current ADC value, as well as the chopped value. It has a lower resolution, but the trigger detection is improved. There are still areas where misdetection is just as bad, where binary carries occur, but it's very cheap on the processor to implement and may be acceptable for some applications. Let's add a little bit more complication. Instead, we can just check that the input has exceeded a plus minus range rather than just blast off the least significant bits. To do this, I'll check if the new reading is greater than the last reading plus some noise range, or if the new reading is less than the last reading minus the noise range. With a large plus minus range defined, the system is super stable, but there are these huge steps when the threshold is passed. I can adjust the range live with this tool, and when I bring it to about the width of the noise, it's pretty stable without a huge impact to accuracy. These solutions are great for when you've got to punch some code in really quick just to get something done. I've done it so many times though, I got frustrated, so I bought a book on object orientation. When you find yourself writing the same code over and over again, it's usually time to move it into its own file or class or object just to contain it. Especially when you've got a logical element that can be abstracted and a hardware element that might be different from platform to platform. So for the remainder of the examples, I'll just show you the core of the algorithm and not necessarily how it's fully implemented. In this example, I've added a sort of hysteresis. If the movement is upward, I allow the output to move freely, but prevent downward movement until a negative threshold is passed. Conversely, if the trend is downward, the threshold is applied positively. I'll give it a ridiculously large threshold here so we can see how it behaves. I can now bump it up by single numbers. This removes the steps that we could see in the arithmetic range approach, but only in one direction. If I go too far, it's hard to nudge the output back down. We're close to something usable now. Instead of just a hysteresis, I'd like to make a window that I can nudge both up and down. It's kind of like having two movable hysteresis thresholds combined and is implemented by saving an upper and a lower limit, then moving both together when either range is exceeded. So now the window isn't changed until either limit is surpassed, which also coincides with the detection hit. Despite having a fair amount of noise, I can still dial the knob into a single number with only a slight degradation to the range of the knob. I'll run the example again, but with a rolling average on the most recent 15 samples, and then pass that to the detection logic instead. Much like an RC filter, a delay is imposed. This is very computationally intensive. My preferred method to get out of the mud is to use a window value of about five, while averaging three or four samples. When working on larger systems like this, though, I really pick and choose. Some of these inputs are connected to things that have very little processor impact, so I slap simple logic on them, while others, such as fine tuners, require precision, and I'm willing to spend more of my system resources making them stable. I hope this video gives you something you can use, and something to think about. If you'd like to see the files used to make this production, check the link in the description. Thanks for watching!